Alright, hey everyone, my name is Jay, and today we're going to be going over some runes and some items and anything that has to do with theory crafting and preparation for Thresh. Now I want to say straight out of the gate, there's a lot of different ways you can build and play Thresh. Well, mostly build. The way you play him is, really he's a punisher of mistakes first and foremost, that's what he does. But the way you build him, there's a very, very, very large variety in what you can do and what's viable. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through all of the different options that you have. And I'm going to be talking about if there's stuff that's better than other things and what the best Thresh players in the world tend to do. And then I'm also going to be showing you guys my personal way of playing and building Thresh because... Like I said, it is a very individual thing. The way you can play Thresh is you can play him like everyone else does if you want to, and that's fine. You can also play him more niche, play him your own way, and do your own style, your own thing. And so I'll be talking about both of those aspects today. We're going to start off with the rune page. As for your keystones, you have two choices, and those are Aftershock and Guardian. By far the most popular one for Thresh is Aftershock. Uh, Guardian is very, very, uh, very good for Thresh specifically, but it's not a particularly strong rune in general at the moment. And that is sort of the reason I use Aftershock as well. Uh, Aftershock, in my opinion, is just way overtuned right now. So there's, it's hard to argue against using Aftershock, basically, is the issue. But you should at least know that Guardian is a very, very viable option for Thresh. And if they end up, you know, buffing Guardian or nerfing Aftershock or tweaking something in the future, then uh, you should at least know that this is an option. Most people pick Aftershock. Uh, every high elo Thresh player, almost everyone, picks Aftershock. As for this row, uh, most people pick Demolish. That's fine, you can do that, it's very strong. Uh, I personally like Font of Life. The thing about Demolish is the way it wins you games is if you're already winning, it allows you to win more. So it's a win more rune, whereas uh, Font of Life is not a win more rune. Font of Life is a I'm gonna win now and I wasn't winning before kind of rune because it enhances your bot lane's ability or basically any situation really. Any uh, 2v2 or a situation where you have a teammate next to you that's trying to kill someone. It doesn't deal extra damage, but it heals your ally, which is pretty nice. Personally, I like Font of Life better, because I love to pick Ignite and just 2v2 the bot lane constantly. I also love to roam with my jungler, roaming mid lane, roaming top lane. I do it all, and Font of Life uh, can be the difference between winning and losing a skirmish. But, like I said, most people pick Demolish because it just feels really nice to walk up to a turret and destroy a lot of it in one hit. <laughs> so if you like that, you can do that. As for this row, most people pick uh, Bone Plating. Bone Plating is the strongest one of these options for all ins. So in that sense, due to the way I like to play, uh, you could argue that I should be picking Bone Plating. The thing is, I'm not running Biscuits in my secondary tree. Uh, which is why I like the sustain from Second Wind better. But to be honest, both Bone Plating and Second Wind will sustain you in a way, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Uh, conditioning is also an option, which I'm not going to use that because I like uh, not having Biscuits. If you like having Biscuits, you should probably run Conditioning or Bone Plating because you don't really need the extra sustain at that point. All three options are viable. Bone Plating is the most popular. Down here, Overgrowth was buffed recently, so that's what I like to use now. You can also use Unflinching, that's what a lot of high elo Thresh players use, because there's so much damage in the game right now that if you get CC'd and you don't have a way to lower the duration of the CC, it's extremely unlikely that you'll get out of any given situation alive. Pretty much every single da uh, damaging champion in the game has ridiculous damage at this point. So unflinching can be the thing that saves your life, basically. Um, but what can I say? I enjoy overgrowth, and I think it goes well with the resistance items you'll be building if you do build, you know, 
anything that's not redemption, which already gives you pure health, basically, as far as defense goes. But it's up to you what you want to do. I've seen Revitalize as well, but it's... You could run Revitalize if you do Lantern Max. I tend to do an alternating uh, ability max between W and Q, so I do Lantern into... Basically, I do Lantern, Death Sentence, Lantern, Death Sentence. That's the way I max my abilities. So I could use Revitalize if I wanted to. The problem I have with that rune is just that Thresh doesn't have anything else in his kit that heals or shields anyone. It's only his Lantern. So I don't think that's enough justification to pick Revitalize. If you were playing Rakan, Revitalize is obviously a must, but this is Thresh, not Rakan. So as for your secondary tree, uh, I believe some people tend to run some weird things with like Triumph and Tenacity. Uh, you also have other options. You can run certain things in the Domination Tree with like Relentless Hunter and a bunch of other stuff. Personally, I find that you almost never see that, and there's a really, really, really good reason for that, and that's because the Inspiration Tree is just godlike for supports. If you look at uh, regular Thresh players like you and me and compare them to high elo Thresh players, there are some big differences in the inspiration runes that people tend to choose. For you and me, something like Biscuits and Cosmic Insight and Magical Footwear, those three are amazing, and you can pretty much interchange them to your liking. If you love playing a roaming style where you get uh, Boots of Mobility pretty much as early as possible, obviously Magical Footwear is not going to help you with that, but I tend not to do that, so I run Magical Footwear. Um, high elo thresh players tend to love stuff like minion dematerializer and even perfect timing and sometimes the occasional hex flash. I don't think that's what the rest of us mortals really need, but uh, you can try it if you want to, and I mean, if you like it, then why not, right? Minion dematerializer can help in some situations when you use it on a cannon minion, Especially with relieving pressure if you're getting pushed in really hard against the Sivir, for example, or really just anything. Um, but personally, I just love free boots and I love Cosmic Insight, so that's what I tend to run. Now before we go into the items, there's one detail that I want to mention about Magical Footwear and part of the reason I use it. Now, just bear with me here, but the way I build Thresh is slightly unorthodox. And what I mean is... 99% of the time, people buy Boots of Mobility on Thresh. And the reason they buy Boots of Mobility is because it's the best boot in the game on Thresh. Pretty much nothing else comes close. Except for Boots of Swiftness, which nobody buys, ever. But I have been trying Boots of Swiftness recently, and I've been finding really, really good results with it, and I find that it feels insanely nice in the game, to be running around with a pair of boots that don't slow you down significantly as soon as you touch something. So, the thing about Magical Footwear is that it makes Boots of Swiftness much more viable, because the 10 plus movement speed applies throughout the whole game from when you get your free boots. Which means instead of having 55 MS, you actually have 65 MS on Boots of Swiftness, which is really nice, plus the slow reduction. And also, if you're buying other movement speed items, then that's going to help even more. But I think that's about it for your runes. Uh, with these ones down here, I'm not sure what's the strongest choice for every single row. Uh, I've seen people do everything. I don't think attack speed is particularly good. Scaling CDR you can run if you want to. Uh, magic res, armor, adaptive force. I mean, I'm not sure. It's kind of up to you how you want to balance your uh, bonus stats out. I just like to have adaptive force and some defensive stats. That's what I do. All right then, on to the items. This right here is my Thresh item set. As you can see straight out the gate, very, very obvious uh, deviation from the standard Thresh build. I am running Boots of Swiftness, like I said, instead of Mobility Boots. And I also personally enjoy Shirelius, but I'll be talking more about that in a second. First of all, just want to mention I have my skill order. I like to do WQ alternating skills, so basically you have Lantern and Death Sentence Max at the same time, but slightly favoring the Lantern. The thing about Thresh maxing abilities is you can do whatever you want. Uh, every single one of his abilities can be used for both aggression and defense, which is part of the reason why his kit is so ridiculously awesome. And so if you want to do Emax, 
you can do it. If you want to do Q-Max, you can do it. If you want to do straight Lantern Max in a difficult lane where you're getting poked out, poked out that's still an option. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, the reason I Max Lantern and Death Sentence is because I find that those are the most iconic Thresh abilities, and I enjoy using them the most, and it takes the cooldown off. When you start putting points into Lantern and start putting points into Q, it takes the cooldown way, way lower by like several seconds per points, which is kind of nuts. As you can see, I have starting items and consumables up top. I like to run coin. Coin is the best for solo queue. If you're a professional player and you need to just be as tanky as possible for any potential ganks or all-ins, maybe you can consider running uh, Targons or whatever it's called, Relic Shield. Uh, but uh, the rest of us, those of us that aren't, you know, pros playing in literally the LCS or equivalent, you're going to want to run the coin instead because the gold income from this item and the movement speed it gets is just extremely valuable. There's pretty much no reason not to get it. Personally, I've always been an advocate of coin, even back when it was not as good as it is today, because the entire mechanic behind the coin is very, very good on Thresh. I mean, you're already running around picking up souls from the ground, so why not just be picking up coins as well, right? It's the exact same mechanic. Anyway, what you can do if you want to be like uh, the most common build and the highest elo thresh build is you can just build redemption every game. So what I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm just going to show you. This is the sort of the, the normal, uh, most common high elo uh, viable thresh build. Basically what you do is you go your support item into boots, and then you get Redemption. Uh, redemption is pretty powerful. Personally, I don't really enjoy the item. I, do, I just don't like using it. And I feel like play, building Redemption for every single support, every single game, is just boring as hell. Which is why I, another reason why I don't build it. But if you want to, you can do that. And to be honest, you can just stop the video right here and take that into every single game you'll be playing of Thresh for the rest of your life. Until they remove Redemption, if they ever do that. Uh, because it is pretty strong. If the game goes longer than that, then theoretically you can start building the actual, you know, other support items that are also really strong on Thresh. Uh, in case you're wondering, these include Knight's Vow, Zeke's Herald, and Locket of the Eye Solari. So, that is basically standard Thresh slash standard high elo Thresh in a nutshell. If you're like me, and you enjoy being a bit more creative than that, then you can start looking for other avenues. I've been enjoying the combination of Boots of Swiftness and Shirelius lately. I think Shirelius is extremely powerful on Thresh. The ability power doesn't do that much for your kit, you don't really need it, and you'd be better served with defensive stats instead, but it does have 200 health, some mana regen is okay, 10% CDR is okay. The 5% movement speed is very very awesome and the active is just ridiculously awesome the active on Shirelius can save you from difficult situations it can save your teammates it can save your entire team it can also initiate it can catch people out like i said thresh is somebody who punishes mistakes first and foremost well you're going to be punishing a lot more mistakes if you have a 40 percent three second move speed aoe boost uh just Try it out in your own game and see if you like it, if you enjoy the idea behind it. What I tend to do other than that is I just build Zeke's Herald, and if the game goes long enough, lock it, and eventually a final item, Warmox, because why not just get an awesome amount of regeneration, right? Plus 800 health, it's decent, uh, decent tank stats for late game. Realistically, you're probably never going to get much farther than Zeke's Convergence. I mean... If you play really well and you get super fed, which admittedly does happen, uh, you might get, you know, the other items as well, but Zeke's Convergence is really, really strong on Thresh. It's up there with Redemption. Uh, I would say Redemption and Zeke's are the two most powerful, like, just straight up, if you look at power and nothing else, those are probably the two most powerful items on Thresh. And then you could say that Knight's Vow and Lock of the Ainsulari are, are second to that. And that is my personal way of building Thresh. So if you want to just copy what everyone else uh, does and what the best players do, then you can do that. You know what to do. Moby Boots and Redemption with Aftershock. That's the way. 
if you're like me and you want to try things that are a little strange, then you can consider going magical footwear with some Swifties and some Shirelius, or maybe come up with your own build. You never know what's, what's effective until you try it. And that's going to be about it for Thresh. Uh, if anybody's wondering about summoner spells, Flash Ignite almost every game. You can run Heal if your AD Carry runs Barrier, but uh, most of the time, Flash Ignite's the way to go. And I think that's it for the video, so I hope it helped you out and maybe inspired you with some ideas that are a little unorthodox, but still very, very strong and very viable. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Peace!